I guess get the bigger question out of the way earlier. Just how do you view your future with the Warriors heading into this offseason that, that feels obviously pretty unknown? We, we don't want to talk about the season first. You want to talk about the future? There was a lot of games played, man. That was a pretty big accomplishment. What's up with y'all not wanting to live in the present, bro? It's ridiculous. <laughs> Anyways, what was your question? About the future. I mean, I, it, obviously, it's it's a, it's a pretty major topic. I mean, you're a franchise legend here who is an unrestricted free agent and certainly at this point has an unknown future here. Um, I mean, how confident are you that, that, that you'll be back? Um, to be honest, I really haven't given it much thought because what I previ just, previously just said about the season we had and how much commitment it takes to play the games we did and give it our all. So I really haven't thought about that deep in the future because I still need to process the year we had. And it was uh, one filled with ups and downs, but ultimately we did, I personally and our team did everything we could to try and, you know, win as many games as we possibly could. Living in in the present, mm -hmm. um, what were some things to be? What were some things going uh, through your head? You know, last night when you were walking off the court, I know you lingered there a little bit longer than usual after the game. Um, some of the things going through my head. Hmm. Well, the first one just disappointment because did not shoot the ball well. Obviously. Big old donut, so that wasn't very fun. Um, I did look up in the nosebleeds, though, and I did see a man wearing a number 11 jersey, and that made me happy, you know, considering my history in Sacramento from playing a state championship there to playing the Kings in the playoffs. That was kind of a full circle moment for me. So that was actually a good moment just seeing that Warriors fan standing by his lonesome up in the 300 level. Repping 11, that made me uh, made me grateful. Clay, <coughs> Steph, Clay, I mean Steph, Draymond, and Steve all basically said they they want you back. They they want to keep this thing rolling. What does it mean to you to hear that from those guys? And you probably already knew it, but what does it mean to hear that from those guys telling the public that? Uh, it means a lot. I mean, we've been through the highest of highs and lows, whether it's losing a championship, winning a championship, missing the playoffs. We've been through everything together. So uh, that does mean a lot and uh, makes me uh, grateful to have the times I've had with them, like done some pretty historic stuff. How do you view the next several weeks going and and, and I mean, it's clear like you're, you're you're not necessarily ready to think about the future this moment, but like, how quickly do you think you're gonna have to kind of pivot and, and figure that out? And, and what conversations do you feel like you need to have? Well, considering it's April 17th, I don't think I have to pivot that quickly. Uh, when is free agency? July 1st? Yeah, I got, got some time. Got some time. Clay, what do you think is the biggest lesson that you learned this past season? The biggest lesson that I learned? Uh, probably I learned that, um, you know, you got to take, you can't be a front runner. You can't shy away from the bad moments and just embrace the great ones. You got to embrace them all. That's for any thing you do in life. Clay, that, that was kind of along what I was going to ask, but what kind of growth did you see in yourself this season specifically with different roles? You had, you know, some ups and downs and you, you, you shined and came back from some, some tough stretches and, and uh, came off the bench and started and just, you did a little bit of everything. Yeah, um, you know, I think I learned that the best ability is availability, and I thought I did that very well this season. Uh, playing through tough times or being available almost nightly, only missing so many a handful of games. So 
uh, I learned that when you give yourself that shot of being out there every night, that's uh, the best thing you can do for yourself rather than just hanging on to those big scoring nights or whatever. It's about just competing nightly. And were there any breakthroughs for you emotionally with, you know, just everything you went through and um, just being able to handle everything you went through? Um, how do you, how do you it all? Yeah, I mean, I'm a strong person. You, you don't, you don't uh, take a couple years off injury and come back and, and uh, play that many games without being strong, strong-willed and minded. So that's what I did learn about myself is that it takes a lot of mental fortitude to uh, play through injury and, yeah, shooting slumps, all that. It takes a lot of willpower. No problem. No, no, you'll have time to obviously think about, you know, what you want to do next, but what do you want to prioritize, you know, for yourself kind of moving forward? What are your priorities? Um. Obviously, you want to keep winning. I mean, when you've been a part of winning seasons, you don't really want to go away from that. So I would like to win again. One for the thumb would be nice. I still think it's in reach. It's just going to, yeah, take a huge effort. But uh, other than that, just uh, got to think about that. What will really make you happy? in the last, you know, few years of your career. You just talked about kind of living the moment, the best ab ability being availability. What do you – I mean, you played 77 games this year. What are you most proud about for this season? The, the, that amount of games I played and, uh, yeah, averaging whatever, 18 points and playing 77 games. It's not my career averages, but it's still pretty dang good for, you know – yeah, it's still pretty dang good. Claire, last night, Draymond was saying that th he doesn't see any scenario in which the ownership group of this team doesn't at least put forth the effort to take care of the guys that have taken care of this organization so much over the last 10 years. Um, do you feel that kind of effort and love, specifically in this scenario, but then also over, I mean, I guess since your entire career here, but since 2019, going through the injuries, the extension after that, just that they've put in that effort to make you guys and you feel appreciated. <laughs> oh, man. Well, 2019. Well, could you imagine if they didn't pay me after I got hurt? That would have been really bad. Like, oh, went to five straight finals. You blew your knee out? Yeah. Sorry. So, no, I mean, that was very nice of them. I mean, I try. I mean, every year I give my best effort. And the uh, ownership group has been great. I have nothing but positive things to say about them. They treat us like uh, they treat us with great respect and do all the little things for us to do our jobs at the highest level. So it's been, um, I mean, I don't really know how to answer that. I mean, it's up to them, but at the end of the day, whatever happens, it's all gravy. It's been such a freaking special run. Clay, how much is your appreciation and love for the game grown, especially since the two injuries? Thinking about that first game you came back here at Chase Center to where oh, we man. are today? Yeah, that was one of the best moments of my life, to be honest. Uh, you know, before those injuries, I was really uh, naive and thinking, like, this is easy. Like, all I got to do is do your routine and you just go out there and hoop and yeah it's that easy but you know playing that many years of basketball takes a toll on your body and uh, I think that's for any sportsman who plays a physical sport um, there's going to be times where you might break and like I said before about being a front runner you don't want to be a front runner when things are great you got to really dig deep when you go through injuries like that. That's just a part of the beast. Clay, since you've uh, proven you're still a quality scorer in this league, obviously teams are playing you differently. It looks like 
you know, they're pressing up on you, being physical. How have you had to adjust? And, and moving forward, what do you think you need to do to kind of uh, combat how teams are going to guard you? I think I just need to keep doing what I've been doing, honestly. I think last night was just a bad shooting night. I mean, it happens. Uh, unfortunately, it was in a one-game format, but that's the situation we were in. And uh, much different than a seven-game series. So I just thought I had a uh, the off night from the office. Can't let that deter me from what I think of myself or what I'm capable of. Uh, I think I just need to continue to be in great shape and have fun, and the rest, and I'll be great. Clay, you, you've talked about gratitude for just playing basketball, and, and uh, obviously the connection with Draymond and Steph comes up a lot. But how much do you also sort of view that this organization, your connection with Steve? I mean, he's the only coach you've had. You know, you talked about how the conversations with him this year that helped turn your season around. How, b beyond just Steph and Draymond, how? comfortable are you in this organization and how does that sort of shape any decision this offseason? I played for Mark Jackson too. Oh, that's true. Sorry. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, I love everyone here from the security who does the floor at the, at the games to the security from the Oracle days. I'm still friends with them. Um, to the community of Oakland. Uh, I mean, yeah, I grew up in the Bay Area, really. I've been here since I was 21. And I just always have loved it. Um, e. Housen, even Ray Ritter. Uh, I've gotten to know these people on 